Small Business Administration and is committed to helping small business owners and entrepreneurs start, grow, and be resilient. She represents more than 32.5 million U.S. small businesses and is a lifelong proponent of small businesses, having grown up as the daughter of a small business owner. Administrator Guzman learned at a young age how important small businesses are to the committee, communities they serve, the people they employ, and the economies they help power. Administrator Guzman has previously served in leadership at the SBA as the agency's deputy chief of staff and senior advisor during the Obama-Biden administration, and afterwards was appointed in 2019 to serve as director of the California Office of the Small Business Advocate by California Governor Gavin Newsom. Welcome, Administrator Guzman. Thank you so much, Tanessa. I appreciate the, the introduction and also for your leadership at uh, GCU. And I think throughout El Paso, the small business community, and my family's originally from Texas. So thank you for your service there. Um, and thanks as well to, to uh, John, uh, you know, the SVP of the National Cooperative Bank and also the chair of the CDFI Coalition and, and the, all the leadership. Uh, I just really appreciate all the work that you have been doing and for uh, welcoming me here, inviting me to join today's important conversation. And, and Kevin, thanks for the, the great open as well. And really uh, appreciate the uh, investments that the banking communities make to help propel our CDFI community. And to all the America's uh, mission lenders out there, our CDFIs, I really appreciate from the bottom of my heart all that you've done and continue to do to keep our community strong and our small businesses afloat, particularly over the last two years. I, you delivered incredible financial lifelines to the smallest of the small businesses and the underserved entrepreneurs in communities across America. And I witnessed it firsthand how you went above and beyond to help our nation's entrepreneurs weather the challenges created by the pandemic whether it was scaling up your staff or working overtime and providing technical assistance and, and hope really to these, uh, to these small businesses that they would get funds uh, to help them survive during this time. And, and that's what you did. You got the funds into the hands of those businesses that we really needed to save. Uh, and as a result of the bridges that you've built to underserved communities across the country, you helped the SBA expand the reach of the Paycheck Protection Program. You know, the SBA is really proud to count CDFIs as partners on the Paycheck Protection Program and many of you uh, as new lenders to the SBA. And with the key PPP policy reforms made under the Biden-Harris administration in 2021 and our expanding, expanded lending network that we've been able to build to serve PPP, the SBA distributed 96% of PPP loans in 2021 to small businesses with fewer than 20 employees. We also improved access for sole proprietors, I-10 holders, and made sure that America didn't close the door on small business owners just because they had a past nonviolent conviction or student loan debt who may have, you know, for those who may have fallen behind on payments during such an emergency. You know, after we made these reforms and with your partnership, a government accountability office report found that we helped close capital gaps, expanding equity and securing more COVID lifelines in those historically left behind communities. You all helped to make that possible. Through PPP, 386 CDFIs distributed close to 1.9 million loans, totaling $64 billion. It's impressive. And now all those small business giants that we saved are powering America's incredible economic recovery. America is experiencing the strongest economic recovery in 40 years after the greatest year of jobs growth in US history, including the biggest manufacturing job gains in close to two decades, we're continuing to create jobs at record pace with 7.4 million jobs created since President Biden took office alone. And as the president made clear in his recent State of the Union address, we're in the midst of historic progress and he's committed to building a better America by shifting from an old, outdated, trickle-down approach to one that centers our workers, our families, and our small businesses by building from the bottom up and the middle out. And we are seeing a period of strong startup growth with a 30% increase in new business applications since the start of the pandemic. In fact, last year alone, 5.4 million 
uh, individuals decided to pursue their dream, their American dream of business ownership, even in the midst of great uncertainty that COVID created. Throughout the pandemic, across main streets and manufacturing hubs and also innovation centers, our 32 and a half million existing small businesses and innovative startups used their trademark grit and determination and their agility to survive the pandemic, really powering their local communities and our economy. And as the president likes to say, it's never a good bet to bet against the American people. And I always like to take that a step further and say that it's never a good bet to bet against America's entrepreneurs and small business owners. And many of you were our partners at the SBA before the pandemic. And so you know that typically we output about $40 billion a year and under $60,000 60, loans typically. And increasingly, just like the industry, we have seen a decline, unfortunately, in loans under 150,000 and more, uh, more concentration in addition amongst our lenders. There was a 40% drop in 7A loans under 150K over the past five years, and half of our loans under 150,000 were made by just 10 lenders. In contrast, through PPP, the SBA served 8.3 million borrowers approximately, with an average loan size in 2021 of 41,000. And we powered over 4 million loans directly through our COVID idle program, a disaster lending program that has scaled to support communities for the last 68 years. We also rolled out highly impacted industry grant programs, reaching underserved and new markets. The SBA portfolio now includes more sole proprietors and mom and pop businesses than ever before. We reached small business owners who had never heard of us or those who assumed that our resources weren't met for them. And that is in large part, in, in, in fact, due to our partnership with the CDFI community. And, and now I think is the time to reflect on all of this uh, and leverage those learnings that we took from pandemic relief programs in particular uh, and how consumers were able to access them and recognize the changes that have been taking place over the past decade to transform uh, the SBA portfolio of products and services. I think now is the time to really reflect and think about um, how we can improve and, and transform the SBA to uh, make change and better serve the needs of our small businesses. We do need to evolve and change if we're going to continue to successfully deliver on our mission and ensure that our nation's entrepreneurs have the funding that they need to start and grow and importantly, be resilient. And I think importantly, the face of entrepreneurship is changing. Uh, so as we reflect on, on the changes that need to be made, we have to consider who the customer is. And as I mentioned, entrepreneurs are launching small businesses at record rates to spur our historic economic growth, but women and people of color are leading the way, starting businesses at high rates. Uh, unfortunately though, for these same entrepreneurs, capital gaps have persisted for generations. Uh, across underserved communities, our rural and low income and veteran communities as well. Uh, and, and those gaps have only widened during the pandemic. And in 2020, black owned businesses were half as likely as white owned firms to get funds from banks while Latino owned businesses were one third as likely. Uh, it's up to us, I think, to meet those emerging entrepreneurs where they are with the resources they need. And so why our continued partnership and relationships with CDFIs across the country are so important. I know over the past year when I've been visiting with so many businesses, uh, small businesses who have been impacted by COVID relief, uh, they've expressed how much these funds have meant to them and how much it saved their businesses. Uh, that's everywhere from the New Orleans certified small, small disadvantaged business construction company that, was trying to, uh, that is trying to get capital now to carry out government contracts who, who had that critical relief but is now looking to the future and how they can contribute to our growing economy. Uh, you know, or a woman-owned Detroit manufacturer that I just met with uh, who does uh, temperature sensors and pressure control systems for some of the large manufacturers. Uh, she wants to finance new production machinery. Uh, you know, there's also a restaurateur out there trying to pivot her business model by producing a line of packaged goods for grocery stores so she can withstand the rising costs and labor shortages in her bricks and mortar restaurant. All of these businesses have been impacted by relief at the SBA and want to look to us now to help them solve solutions, solve some of their challenges and accessing capital to grow their business into the future. Uh, and that's, again, uh, you know, time and time again, it points always right back to the need for affordable capital, expanded networks of distribution for capital. 
So our priority now is to focus on that customer experience first and deliver more small dollar loans at scale, expanding capital access with equity so more of our entrepreneurs can achieve business success and build wealth for their families and communities. That's our priority and goal across the Biden-Harris administration is to put equity first and make sure that we can build the inclusive ecosystems to strengthen our economy and build a better America. Uh, we did learn important lessons from PPP, and uh, we learned that we can serve millions more small businesses if we use technology in particular to streamline, simplify our rules on the back end, and automate. And we learned that we can root out fraud as well if we adapt best practices that we've seen in the private sector uh, to, to all of our SBA programs. And we also learned that when we connect with the right partners and build a financial model that works for them that we can vastly increase our reach and impact in underserved communities by meeting our businesses where they are, oftentimes through community financial institutions in addition to CBFIs. Our mission lenders are those partners and you understand the problem of the disproportionate access to capital that so many communities face. Uh, it's in your core DNA, your mission is to fix it. Uh, and so we are aligned with you completely in your charge. And, you are the ones, I believe, addressing the issue, and the SBA is here to back your play and be your partner. We built incredible networks during COVID-19, leveraging the SBA's capital programs, which are strengthened by some of the best public-private partnerships uh, across the banking sector and uh, across our lending institutions to increase access to capital. And first and foremost in that effort, I am committed to better supporting our lending network. And that includes strengthening the Community Advantage Program, which so many of you participate in. Uh, we wanna grow its impact. This is an incredibly popular program executed by our mission-focused lenders, and we're excited to be pushing for its expansion. It's why the President's Build Back Better Act included permanents for Community Advantage along with additional funding. And we're also working to revolutionize our online platform, Lender Match, which is uh, a great uh, you know, tool that helps connect all the small businesses that visit the SBA and visit all of our technical assistance providers and navigators across the country. Uh, and we wanna make that platform more user-friendly for both our borrowers and our lenders. This includes building a robust pre-application intake that prompts potential borrowers to start the application checklist for SBA loans and then hands them off seamlessly to lenders in our networks in a more application ready state. And I know many of you will appreciate this when a borrower is not ready or not suited for an SBA loan, with, we have the networks and support on technical assistance to connect them to. So we're gonna build a TA off ramp that pairs borrowers with technical assistance providers to help them get application ready when they're not. We learned during COVID that our businesses need more financial technical assistance, and we need to prioritize building up this capacity. In addition, our $100 million Community Navigator pilot program will help us reach further into underserved communities, building the bridges that have been lacking between the SBA and the small businesses who need our help. The idea of the Community Navigator program is to leverage what already exists and build on the relationships, the trusted networks that are there for our small businesses. We're using a hub and spoke model, and I know that two CDFI coalition members are SBA Community Navigator Hubs, uh, both OISTA and LISC, and another nine are spokes in our system. We have uh, 51 grantees and over 400 spokes across the country. I paid a visit to LISC, in fact, in Mesa, Arizona, with Senator Kelly recently, and we learned about the innovative work that they're doing locally through their spoke rail CDC. Uh, they're trying to support small businesses in the Mesa light rail transit corridor specifically. It's a low income community uh, that home, that's home to more than a hundred Latino and Middle Eastern business owners. So they are there working to try to make sure that they connect all those businesses to the resources that they need at the SBA across our networks and across our lending networks as well. This is the kind of hyper-local, community-focused, authentic outreach, and our community navigators are building in countless ways in hundreds of communities across the country. As SBA administrator, I am focused on delivering on the president's vision that every American with a great idea from anywhere and everywhere can connect to the funding, the marketplaces to grow their revenues, and the network of advisors and navigators they need to access knowledge and successfully achieve the American dream of business ownership. 
And I know that all of you can imagine what we could accomplish together if we closed those persistent capital gaps and gave more of America's entrepreneurs the keys to start and grow and be resilient, leveraging all these opportunities presented by the president's commitment to build a better America, making more in America, strengthening our supply chains, rebuilding our infrastructure, and increasing competition so that our small businesses have a fair shot. I look forward to working with all of you to make that happen. As I know, core to your mission, you're committed to making sure that small businesses can help grow uh, the economy and local communities. Their impact is long lasting. We know that they not only define our neighborhoods and deliver the products and services that we all come to love, uh, but they are core to uh, the employment and, and uh, the ability for communities to build wealth uh, and strengthen across time. So we look forward to your partnership and I know that uh, our future is strong when we continue to develop and invest in our CDFI networks.